And I believe that God is moving by His Spirit. I believe that there is a, there's, it's, there's an exciting time ahead of us. Uh, people from time to time just come up with a, just a, a small phrase, things are about to happen. There's a breakthrough coming. Uh, all these sort of statements, because, and I really believe there is. Amen? But I believe too that there's a, a major part that you and I have got to play in this, what God is about to do. Because he won't do anything without he does it through us. And uh, that's he wants to use his church. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says this. It says, call unto me and I will. Everybody say, I will. Don't, he doesn't say, I'll consider it. He doesn't say that I'll think about it. He said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. These things that we do not know, God wants to show us. How many people know that there's great things that He wants to reveal to us by a Spirit? It says in the Scriptures, it says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love Him, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. So if you want to get hold of the things of the, of the truth and the knowledge and what God's about to do, you've got to get into the Spirit. Amen? You've got to let the Spirit get around. You've got to let the Spirit speak to you. I, I believe that God's Word is full of great, precious promises. It says in 2 Chronicles 7.14, which we really all know so well, it says, if, everybody say, if, if my people who are called by their name, by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Father, we thank you today that there are precious and mighty promises that you've given to us, but they're conditional. But my God, I pray today that we would have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us in this place. Lord, that we would have an obedient heart. And my God, that we would desire that you would rule and reign in our lives, in our decisions, and on this planet, and for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. You know, God says that if we humble ourselves and call upon Him, and He will heal our lands. But the leaders of our nation think they know better than God because they're wanting to take out the Lord's Prayer. They're wanting to take out prayer and all those sort of things from their, from their meetings. I believe that they don't want God's influence, but I don't know about you, but how many people want God's influence in your life? We need God's influence in our life. God wants to show us great and mighty things. And I believe that God wants to heal our land. And I believe that He wants to deliver us. And He wants to set us free. The Bible says, and I believe that God wants us to draw near to Him so He can draw near to us. He said, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And I believe that there's a great call, if I can say it like this, or there's a, there's a move of the Spirit that church as we know it is going to change dramatically. And we're not just going to come and, and hear a sermons and, 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 and just listen to messages and, and, and you know come on to altar calls and different things like that. But I believe in the middle of our praise, in the middle of our worship, the Spirit of God is going to come in like a mighty rushing wind or like a great flood. And it's going to lift us and there's going to be a desire in our heart not just to come and hear the latest fad or the latest message or, or this or that, but there's going to be something inside of us that's want to draw near to God, that wants God. And, and out of that hungering and out of that, out of that which this building, and, and, and I don't know about you, but that, is there something like that happening in your life <laughs> where, 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 where we're just... We want God. <laughs> Just want to sense His presence. It doesn't matter if, if I don't get a, a, a great, some great revelation to preach this morning. It doesn't matter. It, I, I just want God to get around our lives. And, and really, I could have gone home after the song service. Because somehow or other, it just allowed the Spirit of God to get in there and, and touch and mingle and, and get around our lives. So God wants us to draw near to Him so he can draw near to us. Be aware that we have the privilege to enter into 
the presence of the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the Almighty God. Sometimes we lose sight of who we really serve. We, we, we lose sight of God. And, you know, sometimes you've just got to sit down and, and, and open up your mind and, and just understand who He is. He's the Creator. He's the awesome God. He's Almighty God. Amen. Man, there's nobody higher, there's nobody greater, there's nobody more awesome, there's nobody more powerful, there's nobody more loving, there's nobody more anything than Him. He is the ultimate. <laughs> he is the supreme. He, oh, Glory to God. Oh, I, I, I do not have words to describe who He is. Because we lose sight of who God really is. This one that we serve, this one that, that says, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. If, if you pray and I'll answer you and, and I want to be your God and I want you to be my people. I, I, I want to gather you like a hen would gather a chicks. I want to be your lover. I want to be your, I want to care for you. I want to watch over you. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. Glory to God. Amen. We lose sight of him. I hear many people say, it's like jest, that they want to live to a hundred so they can get a letter from the Queen. And that's okay. Because they, somehow or other, the Queen is so important and, and, and uh, the Queen who doesn't know you from a hill of beans, <laughs> doesn't know you from a bar of soap, <laughs> and never ever will, and most probably has nothing to do with sending the letter to you. I don't know about you, but I don't see the queen sitting down saying, well, glory to God, who's a hundred today? She most probably doesn't even get involved, doesn't even get attached, doesn't get anything about it, yet, yet we, high, we hold her in such high esteem. That if, if the Queen of England would bow and we'd, we'd reverence and we would, you know, we would do whatever you got to do and try and kiss her on the right cheek or whatever you do, don't touch her even. But the King of Kings, the God who wrote a book, <laughs> this God who wrote a book to you, amen. I know about getting a, a, a telegram or a letter from the Queen. I got a book from the Creator, hallelujah. <laughs> It's all about me. And he almost got my name right when he put Nehemiah in there. <laughs> written to you. This book written to you from the King of Kings who knows the number of hairs that are on your head, that knows the intent of your heart, that knows everything about you, and all he wants to do for you is good. He wants to heal your land. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. And our queen, who we love and respect, will one day bow her knee to this great and awesome king and acknowledge him as Lord of all. Acknowledge him as Lord of all. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm about to say right now. And if you're a Queenslander, you're rejoicing. If you're from New South Wales, you most certainly don't want to hear this. <laughs> the roar that went up from Suncor Stadium as a Queensland team ran on the field. Did anybody hear that roar? I could hear one man from my house shouting. <laughs> As a team ran on the field and they started to chant, Queenslander, Queenslander. Man, I want to tell you that that, that just put doodads on me. Adam, I, I, I could hear him. He was out there shouting his head off. <laughs> that roar that went up and... The atmosphere that I could imagine. For what? For what? 
For most New South Wales people, they've, they've forgotten it all already. For what? So inside me was, a, was saddened as I thought, if only that shout was going out for Jesus. Well, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. There's, there has to come a shift because there are things that are not important that are so important to us. And there's things that we neglect that should be the most important things in our lives. And that's why I believe there's got to come a shift. There's got to, there's got to come a change in church as we know it. In, in what we do. That was an amazing day. It was an amazing thing. And yes, I was glad to be a Queenslander. I was glad to be on the winning side. And I knew that the Queensland players had to play hard and keep on coming to bring about the victory. I believe honestly the Queensland should never have won this, this series. New South Wales should have won it in the second game. But they quit. They stopped. But there was one thing. There was one thing that brought about the victory was that they kept on keeping on. Amen. Amen that they kept on moving, even though it didn't look in the natural. I can imagine the chatter. I can imagine the, the New South Wales players as they said, you, we've got you this time. This, this series is ours. But they just kept on coming. They just kept on coming. They, and friend, I want to tell you that God wants to raise up a people that won't be put off by the little things that go on around this world, but we'll keep on coming. Amen. We'll keep on pushing through. We'll keep on believing. We'll keep on going until we hit that victory in Jesus' name. And what an amazing victory it was. And that great victory and the roar and the shouts. As they were going out of the field, they were still yelling, Queenslander, Queenslander. And I want to say again, for what? But it's nothing to the victory that our Lord won for us. Amen. Oh, yeah, it was great. It was great to be there. It was great. To, I would have loved to have been there in that, that atmosphere. There's nothing like the atmosphere there. But, but, friend, I want to tell you, there's another atmosphere that you and I have got to build around our lives. It's nothing to the victory that our Lord won for us. The battle was hot. It raged strong. Everything was against him. But there's one thing different. He didn't have the crowd shouting, Jesus was standing alone. He was standing alone. There was an amazing story about, as David shared there, that that little boy really thought he was going to die. Jesus knew he was going to die. Jesus knew the punishment. He knew what they were going to do to him. He knew about the, about the, the whip. He knew about the, everything else that was going to go on, yet he did it. The battle was hot, and he stood alone. How great is our God, amen. Why don't you lift up your hands today and just say, how great is our God. How great is our God. How awesome is our God. How amazing is our God. And the enemy would try to take away the victory. The Anzac worked tirelessly to keep the spirit of Anzac alive. Lest we forget, they, can't, they give you little things with lest we forget. Don't forget the battles. Don't forget that what, what, they, that what all our soldiers that gave their lives and all those people that come back, their lives are just messed up. Lest we forget. I want to say, have we forgotten the victory of the cross? Lest we forget, amen. 
We are children of the Most High God. I believe we should make room for the Lord. I honestly believe that there has to come a shift. We can't just be Sunday Christians. We just can't be, well, hallelujah, the weather's nice, I'll be down at the beach today, or, or this or that. I honor Nancy this morning. You don't know what she went through last night. You don't know the pain. Trying, she was trying to get a, a doctor to get to her, and just we couldn't get one, and these things you're supposed to ring up, they couldn't turn up. But the agony, the pain that she was in, and still is. And I spoke to her this morning. I said, don't come. She said, I'm coming. Friends, we've got to put an effort in if we want to get to God. Can you hear what I'm saying? I'm not, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but friend, we've all been affected by it, but there's something that we've got to do in our own lives. We've got to generate. We've got to start to excite, get excited. We've got to start to rise up. We've got to start pushing through. We've got to start telling everybody how great our God is. Amen. Lest we forget the great victory. We've got to talk to people about how he shed his blood, how he died for you. I had some guys knock on the door the other day, and I usually don't speak to these fellows, but I thought, oh, praise God, I'll have a talk with them. Yes, sir, and they've got this book. I started to talk to them about the things, and, and I was just acting like I didn't really know, and they were telling me all these stories about death and life and things like that. And you know, one of the things that they said was that I said, well, you going to heaven? They said, no, we're not going to heaven. We're staying here. I said, oh, yeah. I said, what, what, what happens here when you die? They said, we go on the ground. I said, well, that's good. That's fine. And uh, he said, you know, he said there was, a, there was a, a guy, Lazarus. He said he died, and that was one of Jesus' best mates. He said, and he went up and he got him out of heaven and brought him back to earth. I said, are you trying to tell me that earth is better than heaven? He said, yeah. He said, otherwise, why would he have brought him back? Lest we forget. <laughs> Come on, church, these people are going around, they're, they're peddling their stuff, and the church sit back singing lullabies. Friend, we've got to get out there. We've got to tell people that Jesus is alive. There's got to come a counter uh, act against the things that the enemy is sowing into people's minds. If the church doesn't rise up, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it, friends? The church must rise up. There's got to come a change. But I believe that the church, basically, we've lost our vision. We've lost our purpose. We've lost our hunger. We've lost our desire. Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we love Jesus. But, friend, that is not enough. If you love me, feed my sheep. I believe we should make room for the Lord in this busy, crazy, at times, world that we live in. It won't happen unless we do something about it. I believe that God wants to pour out His Spirit upon us to bring a blessing that you cannot contain. In 2 Kings, I want you to have a look with me in chapter 4. Are we doing all right here? You catch my drift? In verse 4, verse 1, it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried to Elijah and said, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditors are coming to take my two sons uh, to be his slaves. And Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your main servant has nothing but a jar of oil. We know this story only too well. We know that, that, that uh, he said, go out and get as many vessels as you can and pour the oil. And when you finish pouring the oil, uh, you know, and then she came to him and said, well, I've done all that. And he said, what? She said, what should I do now? He said, well, sell all the oil and pay your debt for your sons and then live on the balance. You know, this is... Most probably, if I could say it, 
Most Christians, that's where we're at. We come to Jesus, it's what I want. God, I, I, I have these needs. I believe, honestly, I honestly believe that there is somewhere that the church is living that God wants to take us out of that and He wants to bring us into this. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Do you hear what I'm saying here today? There's a shift that's got to come where it's not, God, yes, we rely on you. God, you're going, to do, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. But God, there's something more precious. There's something more important. My God, that is my relationship with you. I want to draw near to you so you can draw near to me, so I can feel your loving arms around me, so I can sense your presence that's uh, touching my life. Because God, that is more important than anything else in the world. A relationship with God, something there that's more precious than gold, something there that's more precious than anything else. And then, in, then as we go on, we, we read a story there in 2 Kings 4 8. And this is another woman here. And it happened on the day that Elisha uh, went to Shuman that there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as Passed by, he would turn in there and eat food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know this, uh, that this is a, man, a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small room on the wall and let us make, put a bed in there for him and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And here's, here's a woman that, that acknowledges God. And friend, what I'm trying to say today is we've got to start to acknowledge God for who He is. And this man that was walking by, she acknowledged that he was a godly man. And she invited him in. She said, come on, come on, have something to eat. Have something to eat. And then she said to her husband, hey, come on, husband, let's make him a room and let's put a bed and a table and something so he can be comfortable. So on this journey that he's having, it's not like us in our automatic cars. These guys walked everywhere. That he may be able to rest in there for a while. And it happened while this was all going on. And I don't know how long he was in that room. I don't know how many times he, he came to that room. I don't know how many times he's, he laid in that bed. But the day came when he spoke to Gehazi and he said, Gehazi, this woman, this woman who was so gracious to us, what can I do for her? That is a whole different attitude. God, what can you do for me? But when God looks at you and He sees your heart and He sees you pushing through and He sees you try to smash all the negativity around your life and He sees you coming day after day, week after week, month after month with your heart open, wide open to God, He will look down and He will say, What can I do for you? Miracles get the attention of man, but generosity gets God's attention. Oh yeah, we want a miracle. We'll go to the miracle meeting. We want to see all the miracles, and I'm glad about that. Amen. But there's something that's more important. It is generosity that will find that God will want more than anything else. What an amazing story! This woman. I believe we should make room for God too. Number one, she recognized the man who walked by her house was a holy man and carried the anointing or carried the presence of God. Make room for the King of Kings so he can spend time with you. Make room. See, this man of God, when, she, when he came, he was in her presence now. She made room for the man of God so the man of God could make room for you would come and make room for her. Make room for the king of kings so he can spend time with you. The woman's generosity touched Elisha so that 
caused the favor of God to be poured out on her? What caused her to be in the right place at the right time? I call it the leading of the Spirit, not coincidence. Miracles get, gets man's attention. Generosity gets God's attention. What can we do for this woman? 2 Kings 4, 1 to uh, 12. Gehazi, she, you know, she, he called her in and, and he started to talk to her and he said, hey, he said, what can we do for you? She said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm, I'm fine. I've, I've, I'm, I've got my family. I'm, I'm fine. She walked away. And then, and then he said again to Gehazi, Gehazi, what can we do? You know, can, can you catch that God's trying to get over things just to get to you? <laughs> He's trying to get over what you're saying to get to you. What can we do for her? And Gehazi said, she has no son. So he brings her in and, and she stands at the door again. And look, one of the interesting things is that the prophet isn't even speaking to the woman. He just tells Gehazi what to say. And Gehazi's there and Gehazi says tomorrow, or I'm sorry, not tomorrow, but at this, this time of the next year or something like that, you'll have a son. And straightway she said, don't mess with me. Come on, don't, 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 don't tell me something you can't deliver. Don't mess with me. I want to tell you, friends, you get under the spout where the glory comes out and God won't be able to mess with you. Every word that God has ever spoken will be yours. Every promise that He's ever made will be yours. Everything that He's ever said is yours. It's yea and amen. It's done, finished, amen. And, and whatever He says, you will have. We know that the time came when this woman bore forth a child. She had a son. I would imagine that, 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 they, that they had a relationship, a friendship, and he would still come in and do things and so forth and so from. There came a time when the child was about 16, I believe, years of age, that he died. He was out in the field with his father, and his father uh, took the servant in it because he was unwell at the time, said, so take him to his mother. He sat on his mother's knee for I don't know how many hours and died. The mother took the boy and took him up onto the prophet's bed and laid him on the prophet's bed. And then said to her husband, get me a, a servant, a young servant and a, and a donkey. I need to go and see the man of God. And he in his natural mind said, why do you want to see him? It's not the Sabbath, it's not this, it's not that. She said, get out of my face. I need to see the man of God. And away she goes and, and she heads off and... and uh, and, and, and as she gets afar so off, because of a relationship, Elisha saw him, saw her and said to Gehazi, it's the woman, it's the Shimon. Go and find out if it's well with the, everything, the son, blah, blah, blah. He goes and he comes back and hurries back and says, no, it, she just, he says, how is it? And she, he said, all is well. She gets to the house, and as she gets into the house, she grabs hold of the man of God's feet. She grabbed hold of his feet and he said, What is this that the Lord has not revealed to me? And he told Gehazi to go and lay his staff on him. As he went with this woman, as he walked into the room, the child was dead. The man of God laid on him, hand to hand, nose to nose, toe to toe, mouth to mouth, started to breathe into him. After a period of time, he got up. But the, it says that the body was starting to warm. He got up and he started to walk around the room, walked around the room, walked around the room, walked around the room, walked around the room. And then it says he went again and he laid on again on this young man. And he started to breathe again and allow the, the, that heat, I don't know, the anointing to flow out of his body. And it says that the young boy uh, sneezed seven times. And Elijah said to the woman, come in and take your son. Gave him back to him. 
Friend, make room for God so God can be intimately involved in your life. He said to her, he said, flee this nation. There's going to be a famine. And I can't remember where he went, but anyhow, he went, she went somewhere. And seven years later, the drought is over and the woman comes back. Gener miracles get the attention of man. But generosity gets the attention of God. And the king at that time was so, so interested in miracles and the miracles that happened, he so happened to have Gehazi in his palace. And he said to Gehazi, Gehazi, tell me a great, about the great miracles that the man of God performed. Oh, oh, friend, what a great opportunity. And Gehazi started to talk about the time when, when an axe head, had be, they were using an axe, and the axe head had broken and fallen into the water. And, 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 they, and, the, and they said, it's a borrowed axe head. And, and the man of God said, get a, get a tree, get a branch, and throw it into the water. But when the axe head floats, grab it. And they did. You know, when we first got saved, we got saved in the charismatic end of the charismatic move, and it was radical. <laughs> it was radical. What we believed in the move of God, the power of God, the anointing of God. And I remember a friend of mine had a, a house in one of the islands there, wherever that is, outside of Brisbane. He had a house there and, and he invited us over and, and Nancy and I were in our boat and we drove over in the boat and as we got to the jetty and I put it into neutral, the nut, the cotter pin had broken and the nut had come unloose and the only thing that was holding the propeller on was that, was that it was in gear. And when I took it out of gear, the, the prop fell off. And we somehow or other got to the thing and my mate was there and I said, I don't know, I'm revving it up. So I pulled the thing up and said, the prop's gone. I've lost the prop. And he said, quickly, get a branch. <laughs> and I don't know, this jetty was a long jetty and he, there was no trees there. So up we go, running up and we knocked a tree down and got a big branch and pulled it up. I was ready to catch it. <laughs> you know what? I don't know, but I reckon God would have been just up there smiling. Eh? I think I've made God smile a lot of times. What about you? Eh? <laughs> You've got no idea. <laughs> but anyhow, that's another story for another day. He, he would have told him about all the, the things that had happened, how, how the, the, the city was besieged and the, everybody was uh, perishing and they were, they were eating donkey's heads and they were, they were eating their babies and there was such a thing. But he said, oh man, you should have seen it as, as, as the man of God stood up in the midst of chaos, in the midst of, oh man, he just stood up and he declared, tomorrow flour and barley will be sold at the gate for a shekel atmosphere some people mocked him and they laughed and he just stood his ground friend I want to tell you a lot of people that might be mocking us look at those silly old goats up there <laughs> they might be mocking us but I want to tell you there's a day coming where they won't mock anymore amen if we keep pushing through, if we don't let the mocking or don't let the negativity or don't let anything else get around us, but we just stay on course and we stay firm to the call, amen, and keep on worshipping and keep on praying and keep on believing for the anointing because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And oh, he's telling this story about the anointing. I can almost feel, oh, Rashaka getting excited myself. 
Oh, he would have told the stories in such a way because he was there. And he would have said, oh, there was a Shumanite woman. Oh, this Shumanite woman, you should have seen her. Her son was dead, died. And, and, and he went in there and he did this and he did that. And he raised him from the dead. And I would imagine that the king was just so excited. And as he said, as a matter of fact, she's out there now. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's her right now, her and the son. You see, what she was doing was very dangerous <laughs> because she could not do what she was doing. You remember Esther? Esther had to really seek God and seek the, the king and said, if I found favor, you know, because she knew that by rights, if, if she didn't find favor, she would be dead. And this woman, she, she, she's now, she's got the Holy Ghost on her too. She's been touched by God that many times. She just walks up there and she said, I want my land back. <laughs> and the king says, come on in. Come on in. And he, asked, he got a, one, of his, one of his men, servants, whatever it was, and says, restore. Restore. I want that indelibly imprinted in your mind today. Restore everything. <laughs> everything that is that that land and whatever that is what restore everything back to her. Friend, I want to tell you, I believe that God wants to restore the church back to its former glory. Hallelujah. I honestly believe that it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. I want to tell you, I believe the Holy Ghost can get on the inside of us and stir the city for Jesus Christ. Amen. We are not the only ones. I'm not trying to say this is that or what anything else. All I know is what God is doing here. And I believe that we're drawing near to God. You want God more than anything else. Friend, we don't just need another massage meeting. <laughs> We need a Holy Ghost meeting. And I believe, I believe, I believe that God wants a spirit of generosity to come around our lives. When I say generosity, there's many ways we can do it. But generosity in our worship. Generosity in our wanting to be in His presence. Oh yeah, it would be lovely today to be sitting down there with twinkling toes in the water, eating chips, and brushing off the seagulls. <laughs> yeah, it would, but friend, be generous. Be generous in your worship. Be generous in, in, in your, just in your attitude towards God. There's, sometimes I, 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 you know me now well enough, I just cannot explain what I'm feeling. I cannot explain what I'm saying half the time. Because it's, We've got a young lady here that's serving God in a, whatever you call it, schools. She gets paid a pittance. Some days there's no food in her fridge. Generosity, friends. We're, we're a church. We're not a big church. And we get by, we, we just got enough. But I want to say, I want to break that, that we've got more than enough. I decided today that I was going to double tithe. So I wrote two. <laughs> I want to give something to break something. I know that I had the privilege of knowing what I was going to do before I did it. <laughs> you didn't. But we do have an FPOS machine here. It's very much alive. 
I want to be able to be in a place where not just to help people in this church, but help people anywhere. People that we might never ever shake hands with. People that we might never ever see. But I believe that if we can get a generous spirit over our lives, and I want to tell you, friends, that this is not for Neil. I don't need anything. I just want to be generous in my love for God. I want to... And it was good to see Troy has come and bow in the presence of God this morning. We've got to be free to do that, amen? I don't, that's, so don't just do it because, no, do it because there's something in your heart that wants you to do it. Amen? You with me? Is that okay to talk like this? Be, have a generous, generous spirit. Have a generous attitude. And Troy, could we you, take up, we've got buckets there, can we just, if you need to, just write next week or something like that. What I found was I used to do that and forget then next week and never do it. Then the devil used to bring condemnation on me. But if God's talking to you today, and you might be in a position to do more than I can do, I'm a pensioner. <laughs> Have a generous spirit. I believe the generous spirit opened up the favor of God over her life. As I was reading the story, I got so amazed that here is God crawling over himself to get to this woman to help her. Got to be something we can do for her. Got to be something I can do. Got to be something we can do for that bunch of people down there. Got to be something we can do for that people. What do, you, what do they need? The Spirit of God might say, they wouldn't mind a nice big building <laughs> that they could meet in every week. They might, who knows what God can do, amen? So Father, we just come to you. And we know that miracles get the attention of man. And we want to see the miracle power of Jesus flow in this place. We want to see the miracle power. We want to see that there would be none, no weak or sick among us. We want to see the miracle power of God flowing in such a way, my God. But Lord, we want to see a generous spirit too. We want to see generosity. Lord, we'd be generous with our smiles. We'd be generous with our love. We could see somebody even in our street, in our, our neighbors, our friends, whatever it might be, somewhere, somehow or other, Lord, that we could bake a cake or give them a meal or do something for them, my God. But generosity would just flow out of us. We'll give you all the praise. But we just wouldn't be generous towards the queen or leaders or something like that, but we'd be generous to the lowest. Everybody. Because it's a generous spirit. And Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Amen. Just